Hey Wompers and welcome back to a new tutorial. In this one I will teach you how to make three different kind of plants ranging from fairly easy to follow to also more complex ones. After this you will be ready to form any kind of foliage or plant that you would like to, as well as get a good understanding of how curves work. So that's exciting, let's jump straight in and feel free to follow along. For this I have already created a lovely little pot, if you would like to know how to make one we covered that in the last tutorial making a flower. Now for plants and foliage we basically entirely work with curves. Curves give us a lot of shape control and the first thing we do in the curve settings is choose a cylinder as the shape we want to work with and I also go ahead and increase the density to its fullest and reduce the goop strength a little bit. Then in the point settings of the curve we can now manipulate our shape so we scale it thinner and we also increase the roundness in the object's properties menu at the right. Here we can also make a change to the color. For foliage I usually go for a bit of roughness and also a bit of translucency depending on how shiny you still want it to be. Usually they can be quite a bit shiny since the surface is fairly smooth. And then we can just position it at the very beginning and make it very small. Now to copy a curve point we basically just drag it out while holding down Alt that automatically creates another point that we can work with. And then I'm starting to form a shape where I'm slowly rotating it a little bit to the side. And what's important to know about curves is that you always need to go with the flow of them. So if we rotate a shape to the right, we also need to move the shape to the right, otherwise it won't form a smooth curve out of it. You always need to see the flow of the curve and go with the rotation as well. So I'm also dragging it a bit to the side and always rotating it a bit as well to give it a more natural shape. And at the very end, on our last point, we want to scale it as thin as possible so it looks like a lovely kind of blade. Now, the next thing we want to do, or the first thing that I can show you here, is what roundness actually does. That's kind of how yeah, round or edgy our shape is formed in the curve. And density is out of how many cylinders the curve is actually built out of. Now, if we copy our first blade here, we can easily just rotate it and maybe we can also rescale it and yeah just place it somewhere different and that almost creates a bit of variety in itself already we just you know rotate it a bit more in front or a bit more to the side scale it a bit smaller or a bit bigger that already creates enough variety to make it believable now we want to copy four blades for now i'm also speeding this up a little bit and once we have the four blades, it's very easy to extend it a bit quicker because now we can just copy all four blades together and we can then basically just scale them bigger or smaller and rotate them so they are filling the gaps of our first four blades. And then that way we basically already have a full plant. I'm then just going into the individual copies of the four blades that we made and just place them a bit more so they're filling the gaps exactly where I want them to be or I rotate them a little more to create even more variety and yeah I think you, you get what I'm going for here and I think it already looks very lovely it's a very easy way to make a plant that also looks very good I think so it's a great start and feel free to give it a try for yourself as well. So now let's come to the second plant and also to the next level of complexity. Here we will add another little trick that's very useful and that is that we can actually change the colors between the different curve points to add some gradients to it. So if we copy our point here we will form a string out of a sphere based curve here first and then if we have the second point we can basically change the color and for the third point as well and all the points that we make basically and it will automatically create a color transition between the points which can look very lovely 
um, especially for plants they often have that they are a bit darker at the bottom and where they go up towards the sun and the light they also do become a bit lighter so that's what I'm going here for um, with the color transition and now that we have this string we can just basically copy the same curve here and what I would like to do in terms of workflow is I just delete all the points that I don't need and leave one that's fairly at the position where I want to continue on. And now I change this copy of the curve back into a cylinder just like the first curve and basically do the same that we did with the blade for the first curve to form a leaf that's attached to the string here. So I'm starting with a cylinder, I'm placing it facing it upwards and this time I'm just playing around a little more with the actual shape of the leaf because I make it go upwards and I make it rotate quite a little bit. I always play around with that rotation as well. I make it go bigger and change the color here as well to create some gradient and then I make it go down and go very thin again and in this way I think we achieve a very lovely form of a leaf that yeah we can also use very well to then just copy from there to extend this plant with. So the first point and the last point are very thin. And now I think that looks very lovely so now we can just basically copy this leaf as well and rotate it around, place it somewhere else and also scale it up a little bit. I'm just skipping this here and showing you what it actually will look like if you could do this a few times you can take your time with this and do as many copies as you want um, so yeah this is what it can look like in the end i also placed two leaves coming out of the end of the string which looks very lovely i think almost looks like it's just growing right now as well so now let's come to the third and most complex plant and here we're going for a monstera kind of plant and they usually have a stem that's usually fairly long and hanging over a little bit. So we start a bit bigger at the very start. We build it out of a sphere-based curve again. And we also go with different kind of gradients within the stem again. So just build up as many curve points as you need to really form the shape. As you can see, I've used a few more here for this one just so we can really have this bow and make it hang over. And then we're basically copying the same curve again, just like we did before, turn it back into a cylinder. And we also want to give it a full roundness again. And for this one, we're working with the mirror. That just allows us to have more complex shapes because we can make it wave from the center in both directions. And for that, we're going for fairly round cylinders. I would actually recommend you to go as round as possible compared to how I did it in this video because the outcome is a bit of a more flat kind of plant while you can also make it bow even more. But now first we need to actually kind of update the stem and kind of adjust it to where the mirror center is. And then we basically want to build up the plant itself by starting a bit smaller and then going with the flow of the stem as well and copy it, make it a bit bigger so we have that kind of flow that the leaf of this plant has and we also want to rotate it down to how the stem is hanging over. So we basically copy another point here, we make it go more inward so it's always connected with the center and we just rotate it down a little bit. And you can keep doing that and you can also keep updating the stem so it's in the center. And at the very end we want to bring it fairly flat and bring it together in the center as well. And once we have that you might wonder, you know, it's looking a bit fake and there's not too much structure in it. And we are fixing that by copying our leaf curve here, turning it into a negative and just putting it down a little bit so it's cutting from below. We also want to increase the goop strength a little bit. That really makes it flat and smooth from the bottom. So next we take a thin cube and we want to give it a bit of a lighter color than our actual leaf plant. And then we turn it into a negative, making a cut. And we can also turn on the mirror here, which makes it faster to work with. And now we want to make those cuts that really make the Monstera plant. And we also want to increase a bit of goop strength so it's not as sharp of a cut. 
and as we saw it's quite a bit thick we just bring that negative a bit upwards so it becomes more flat and then for those cuts you also just want to give them some variety you change the rotation bring some more towards the inside some you increase in the size as well and like that you can see how it's really building up and then I'm also just taking one of those cubes that we made the cuts with and just bring it so we can adjust the actual form of the leaf and make it a bit sharper at the front and just overall have a bit more of shape control from the outside as well. And then once we have that we basically repeat the same process, we just copy our stem as well as the leaf together and rotate it and scale it a little bit and bring it onto different sides and then we basically copy all of that we make it smaller and we rotate it into the gaps of it and like that we can basically build up a really really lovely looking plant here very complex in its shapes and very yeah very good looking plant i think so here you can see i have made three even more complex versions out of the plants that we already made. You can see with the first one I have made longer stems and just put leaves at the end of it. With the Monstera plant that's how it looks if you do the shape more rounded up instead of more flat so you keep more roundness and high like higher size in the cylinders that's how it turns out in that way then. I think I even prefer that a little bit maybe something in between the two. And then for our first simple plan, I basically just gave the blades a bit more for complex shapes, making them hang down more and also just copying even more blades, which also makes it look very complex, very cool plant. And then if you have them ready, you can also play around with the exposure, put some lights on them, make sure to give them some light, some water so they can grow and become as beautiful as I'm sure your plans have become by now. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial as always and found it helpful. And please feel free to share what you've made on the Discover page. We would love to see your plans and I hope you're happy with the little plant friends that you made for yourself. I'll see you in the next video.